Hi, in this video we will look at how to develop a simple serverless service and deploy it in AWS. We will also look at how to invoke this service locally which will save us time to develop and debug on a local machine. We will also look at how to monitor this service in cloud. Once you understand all of these pieces, you can easily develop your first serverless service. So what is serverless service? In a serverless service, you as a developer do not need to worry about where and how your code runs and how compute resources are managed. And this is basically how it began as one of the cloud computing execution models. In 2014, Amazon first released AWS Lambda, which supports major programming languages like Node.js, JavaScript, Python, Java, C Sharp and Go. So did the Google Cloud called Google Cloud Functions. And IBM has its own serverless platform called OpenWhisk. Microsoft Azure offers functions in both Azure functions in both public and private cloud. So what are the use cases in serverless service? So we are look these use cases differs between cloud providers. So for example, we are looking at a you know use cases for a serverless service in AWS. For example, the serverless service application in AWS can leverage to build an Amazon Alexa skill. And the same scenario where in Microsoft Azure, uh, you know, um, the serverless service can take leverage of Cardona or any other services provided by that uh, pro cloud provider. So let's take a look at what are the basic components of the serverless service. The first thing is a trigger event which is fired based on a request or an event through an endpoint or a gateway, which then communicates with the serverless service runtime. This runtime is where actually our code runs. The runtime then takes the code from the storage and executes the request and performs the operation and sends the result back to the re request through the endpoint. Once the request is finished, the, the serverless runtime will be discarded. So as you may notice, this whole process is short-lived, especially the runtime. That's the most expensive part of this operation to compute a particular function or a unit of code. So we are going to deploy our, um, AW, uh, our serverless service in AWS. In our case, we have a HTTP request as an event trigger which then uses an Amazon AWS API gateway to, gateway to communicate to AWS Lambda, which provides the runtime for our function or unit of code to run. This particular code or the compiled program is actually stored in a secure S3 storage bucket, which is another service in AWS. But who is going to you know, set up all these infrastructure components in AWS? Then comes to the rescue uh, which is an another AWS service called AWS Cloud Formation. In this case, the AWS Cloud Formation takes a JSON or a YAML configuration file which contains the resource descriptions and the configuration that we need for all of our the com for all of our components, for example, S3, Gateway, and Lambda to be deployed in AWS. So, but how are we going to build this Cloud Formation template or this configuration file? Instead of using Amazon, uh, you know, AWS SDK or IDE, we are going uh, to develop and deploy our service. Instead, we are going to use a framework known as serverless framework. This is a single serverless framework uh, that provides a toolkit for developing serverless architecture to any provider like AWS, Azure, Google or IBM. And it also provides a unified development experience using a single command line interface to be able to develop across, uh, you know, and this cross platform support uh, to be able to provide an agnostic in terms of deploying our service to Lambda or Azure, you know, or Google Cloud. And it supports multiple languages, Node.js, Java, Scala, or C Sharp. In our scenario, we will use the Node.js and JavaScript as um, our the development environment to deploy our serverless service using the serverless service framework. So putting all these pieces together, the serverless framework allows us to publish our function, which contains the business logic, and also the infrastructure code, which contains the, uh, all our components, the components that we need to deploy our function into AWS. 
So serverless framework accomplishes all of this using two set of files. One is a handler.js, which actually contains the function, the business logic that we're talking about. And the server.yaml contains the metadata for the infrastructure components like S3, API Gateway, and Lambda. It also defines the trigger events associated with the function. In our case, these are the HTTP requests. So what do we need to deploy a serverless service to AWS? The first thing is Node.js and a serverless plugin, the AWS account with access to AWS Management Console, and AWS Admin Service account publish our business logic and infrastructure code to AWS, and a simple code editor. So without wasting any such time, let's go ahead and get started on building our first serverless service. So we are going to build a simple serverless service that returns a test message when it receives a get method over a HTTP protocol. So we are basically building a web service as serverless service. Before we develop the AWS service, let's just first go ahead and create an AWS account that will be used to actually deploy our service. Log on to aws.amazon.com, access the console and type IAM, click on users, click on add user, type in this case serverless admin, provide programmatic access not the management console access, click next, click on attach existing policy and make sure you provide administrative access to this account, click next, create user. After this, you will be given an access key and a secret key. Make sure you copy these keys in a secure location. Now let's log into the command shell and verify the node version by typing node.v. And now let's go ahead and install the npm module called npm install using npm install dash g and serverless. So serverless is actually the node.js module that we will be installing um, in order to deploy our AWS service. Once the Node.js uh, serverless plugin is installed, let's go ahead and create a simple directory. This will host our serverless files in locally. Now let's go ahead and configure credential. The credential is important for the serverless API to deploy our service. So we'll use the serverless API, serverless space config space credentials dash dash provider. In this case, it's AWS dash dash key and dash dash secret are the ones that we downloaded when we created a user in AWS. So make sure you copy them here. And once this um, credential is configured, let's actually go ahead and create a template uh, for our service. So template is a set of um, a boilerplate that the serverless provides us. So we don't need to start from scratch. The template handler.js and a template server.yaml. So we'll use serverless space create space dash dash template then template is the AWS node.js template and the path is actually the name of the service so this is your name of the service that will be deployed into AWS so we just created a template we haven't deployed yet so let's take a look at the template and what it is what it has so as I mentioned before it has two files a handler and server.yaml so let's look at the server handler.js file which hosts our function so if you look at if you look at here, um, it created a function called hello, and it takes three inputs: event, context, and callback. Event is actually the trigger event that executes this function. Context is actually the runtime and the context of the runtime. Callback is actually the response that you get um, when this function is executed. So you can see the callback has two um, you know properties: the uh, uh, the error as a response, the error in this case is null, and the response is actually a JSON object that we are sending back with a status code of 200, and the string, um, a JSON string uh, with two values, input and message. The message is here, we can go ahead and change this, so we'll write um, first serverless service, and the input is the event, the event is actually the HTTP trigger. So we will see that HTTP trigger in our response as well, just to confirm that what has triggered it. And let's look at the server.yaml. This is our, um, you know, uh, metadata for our um, infrastructure components that we need. So 
we're going to name the service as test service which i mentioned as the path in our template now the provider is the aws and the runtime is node.js now let's also look at other properties like staging you know what stage is your application in is development and the region we are in in this case us east coast one and now the functions so we had created a test function called hello and that's what we had mentioned here and the handler is the file that can or you know the um, uh, the export module that we are trying to uh, you know that was mentioned in the handler.js file is the hello so we are just specifying you know where the function actually exists So the function is executed through an event. So in this case, the event is the HTTP request and the path is actually uh, what uh, the route in which the HTTP request comes in. So for example, we, we may go ahead and change the path to be something like hello slash get where hello is actually the function that we're trying to execute and the get is the method that we're trying to execute as well to be clear. Now there are other events that you can trigger this function. In this case, it's Alexa skill, um, IoT, you know, Cloud Watcher, S3, a lot of things. So we also have other things that we can use um, to the cloud formation template when we are deploying the service like S3 buckets and other things that we want to actually orchestrate. But in this case, we'll just save that. So let's cd to the directory and actually go ahead and deploy our serverless service so serverless space deploy and uh, space v so in this case we had deployed our function and the endpoint is actually what we are going to actually trigger the function as so let's copy the endpoint and execute that as you can see here when we executed the endpoint over an HTTP protocol, we received our message. It's the first serverless service. So we deployed our first serverless service into AWS. Now let's go ahead and actually monitor the serverless service, you know. So in, in order to do that, let's go ahead and go to the Cloud Watcher logs. type CloudWatch in the AWS service and then you can see here click on the logs and you can see that's a test service so click on the log streams you can see that's where it starts the request starts the request ends if you try to you know if, if you refresh the page multiple times then you will probably be seeing multiple requests here so this will tell you every detailed bit of information that you need to know when you execute the service now let's try to you know um, you know understand how you actually debug this in AWS so in order to do that what we'll do is we'll simply modify the handler.js to incorporate a simple error and deploy the function and see what you get so let's go to handler.js and modify the file just to make sure that we have a typo or an error and save it and go ahead and deploy the function So the function has so the function will be deployed and let's go to the same endpoint and try to execute the function over a get method let's copy the endpoint URL here click you, know, you can see here we receive an internal server error that means that our service did not work so let's go to AWS and see the logs and you can see here we have a syntax error in our module so that's kind of shows you how you know a basic way to actually deploy and debug your service.